Hello, everyone. We're just going to give a minute for folks to be able to join. All right. Well, thank you everyone who is here today for our In You In Greece visa webinar. We're going to be sharing a lot of information today about the process of obtaining a Greece for uh, um, obtaining a visa for Greece so you can travel smoothly in the fall. Um, a, a few logistical items before we get started today as we move through the presentation. Just please remember that the chat has been disabled. However, there is a Q&A box in there. We're gonna be doing our best to address every question that you all may have throughout the presentation. Um, we have about 45 minutes to, to chat with you today. So we will do our best, although there are quite a few of you in this space today. Um, and we'll go ahead and do some introductions of who's in the room. Okay. So, hello everyone, wherever you are in the world right now. Uh, my name is Virginia Ward. I'm the Immigration Policy and Compliance Manager at Northeastern University, and I support the NUN program in assisting students and families with their outbound immigration needs. And hello everybody, my name is Angel Alvin, and I'm the Associate Director of Enrollment for the American College of Thessaloniki. It's great to see you all here today. Morning again. My name is Megan Bunton. I'm one of the assistant directors that works with the NUN program and I help support Greece. And hello everyone. My name is Daniel Silverman. I am program supervisor here with NUN. I'll be on the ground with you guys in the fall in Greece. Hey. Okay. So before we get started, we have a few quick reminders. Uh, this webinar is being recorded on May 14th, 2024. So if you're watching a recording of this later in the summer, please note that the information might be different than what is presented at this time, but everything that we're discussing today is accurate as of May 14th, 2024. So also as a reminder, just to set expectations, Northeastern University and ACT have no influence on the outcome of immigration applications, including the decisions and policies of Greek consular authorities and the Greek foreign ministry. No ability to inquire about individual immigration applications or to expedite the process for an individual student. Students are responsible for completing all required applications for immigration permissions or registrations correctly and in a timely manner and for obtaining any permissions prior to the program start date. Okay, so as an overview of what we'll be discussing today, we'll be going over program logistics, your academic calendar, and answering some big questions. Do I need a visa? Where do I get a visa? We'll be talking through visa application process steps, additional supporting documentation, some FAQs, and we'll be going over our contact information. So I'll pass it off to Angel to talk about program mm -hmm. logistics. Yes, so just some information about uh, the program logistics uh, of the courses you'll be taking this fall. They all will be on campus, uh, conducted in person on our beautiful campus in Thessaloniki. As far as the academic program link at ACT, uh, the duration is over 90 days. Therefore, all students who have are all non-European Union or EEA citizens are required to obtain a visa. So also to note, uh, if you're traveling with the NUN group flights, uh, the flight has already taken into account uh, the academic calendar into consideration, uh, so you're good to go there. Um, but if not, if you're purchasing your airfare, it's best to review uh, the ACT academic calendar to determine how many days you plan to be in Thessaloniki in the Shenzhen area. So on the next slide, we actually have a picture of our academic calendar. Um, as you can see here, uh, student arrival, will be on the days September 10th and 11th. So you can have plan to arrive on those days. Uh, and then the following week after is student orientation from September 12th 
through the 17th. Uh, this is when our uh, staff on the ground will help students get oriented and set up for success. Um, and then you'll see the start of classes on September 18th, as well as the last day to drop in ad courses is September 24th, and then midterms and important holidays um, and other dates to notes. And then you can see at the bottom there when final exams are uh, through December 5th through 11th. And then the final departure date is December 12th and 13th. So that's when you uh, want to plan to for your return flights, um, although we do recommend that you uh, have a flexible uh, ticket. So then sometimes students want to stay at the end and travel a little bit, um, but it's just some uh, the dates to keep in mind. So the big question that many students have is, do I need a visa? The answer is yes, absolutely. The only exception is if you hold a valid passport for an EU or EEA country, uh, you legally have the freedom of movement throughout the EU slash Schengen area, so you do not need a visa. But for example, if you just hold U.S. citizenship or only Canadian citizenship or only a passport to a non-EU EEA country, you will need a Greek student visa for your time at ACT. So passports. I know that we started talking about passports fairly early in the cycle. So perhaps before you even selected your NUN location, you received messaging from us about uh, making sure that you have a valid passport, valid through at least um, the middle of 2025. So US and Canadian passport holders will obtain their visa from their local Greek consular authority. And US permanent residents based in the US can also apply through their local Greek consular authority. As I mentioned, EU EEA Passport holders do not need to apply for a visa. But we know we also have a number of students who fall into a different category. So either you're based outside of the US or you might not hold a US passport or legal status in the US at this point. So for those students, uh, where you apply for your Greek visa and your application process will vary quite a bit. So please reach out to anyone at northeastern.edu and we'll be able to provide you with individualized guidance and support based on your personal situation. And then as far as uh, the question of where you can get a visa, um, as mentioned, there are uh, Greek consulates located throughout the US. There are actually nine locations that you can apply for uh, a national D visa that you need to study abroad with us. Um, and the locations are here. They're spread out through the South as well as the East and the West. Um, in Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Houston, um, a couple in California with Los Angeles and San Francisco, as well as New York and Florida and Washington, D.C. So as far as identifying uh, the Greek consulate in your jurisdiction, um, there is a link in your visa guide that takes you to the main Greek consulate website, and you'll see the nine uh, consulates, consulates listed. And when you click on the consulate, uh, say the Boston consulate, uh, you'll see the different states in that jurisdiction. So say if in, you're in New York, you want to click on the New York and you'll see the list of states. Um, and so if you have any questions about which state uh, you may be applying in your jurisdiction, please feel free to reach out to us. Another thing to note, uh, sometimes students may live in a different jurisdiction than where they go to school at. Um, so say if you go to, uh, you know, going to school in Boston, but your permanent residence may be in California and you may be home over the summer. So you may want to take into consideration where you may be over the summer where you're applying for the visa. Okay, so we're going to walk through some of the steps that you'll need to go through over the summer. And these are also mirrored in your visa guide. So we hope that you've had a chance to review that document as well. So first step, is to locate the Greek consulate in your region. So the consulate that has jurisdiction over your permanent or current address. Um, as Ma Angel mentioned, you can find a link to that information in our visa guide as well. Next step is to download and complete the Greek national visa application form from the Greek consulate's website. This is a fairly standard form where you'll be asked questions about um, who you are, where you live, purpose of your time in Greece. Then you'll also request an acceptance letter from ACT. This is going to be a letter that is in Greek. So it is generated by the team on ground in Thessaloniki. Uh, the link to the Google form to 
request this is also available in your visa guide. Please note that this process can take up to two weeks. So if you haven't already done so, we recommend that you uh, complete this Google form as soon as you're able to. Next, double check that your passport is valid for at least six months beyond the end of anyone Greece to ensure that you'll be able to both travel on that passport and successfully obtain a visa. So that would be until at least July of 2025. So if your passport expires before July 2025, we recommend working to renew it as soon as possible. If you have specific questions about uh, either renewing your passport or getting your passport for the first time, please feel free to reach out to us via email and we can provide you with uh, some information and further assistance. So next, one of the requirements to apply for a Greek visa, and this is for all consular jurisdictions, is a national criminal background check. So in the US, that is an FBI background check. If you're located outside of the US or are applying for your Greek visa outside of the US, it might be something different based on your country's policies. But for the US, all students will have to submit an FBI background check. So to have that completed, there are a few options you can pursue. So one is to go to an authorized US Postal Service location. They'll take digital copy of your fingerprints and you should get back a um, basically a PDF letter from the FBI stating the results of your background check within a few business days. Another option is to go to a local police station or other authority and have an actual um, ink card taken with your fingerprints. You would then mail that in to the FBI and they would send you either by email or by mail a copy of your background check results. Greek consulates generally don't require any specific format of your background check results. So generally it's fine if you go through the digital process and just submit uh, the one page letter you get from them confirming that um, there are no hits on your background check. Oh, just sorry. I just wanted to note quickly, Virginia, on the previous slide with the, uh, the ACT letter in Greek, um, so once you schedule your appointment uh, for your visa, you'll be able to order the ACT, the letter from ACT in Greek, because on the Google Doc form, it asks uh, which consulate you will be going to for your appointment. So once you schedule your appointment uh, with the consulate, go ahead and fill out the acceptance letter from ACT in Greek. That way we can send it right away um, for your appointment. Okay, so you will also need to obtain passport size photographs, so two inch by two inch. Um, you need these to actually be printed out on photo paper. So uh, we recommend going to CVS, Walgreens, any place that takes professional um, passport photos because there are some pretty stringent regulations on what um, they need. You'll also contact consulate to set up an appointment. So this is where you might encounter a fair degree of variation depending upon where you are. Some Greek consulates have an online booking service to book your appointment. Some take appointments only by phone. Some take them only by email. So this is where it's important to identify where uh, you have, where your local consulate is and what consulate has jurisdiction over your area because how you proceed to book your appointment will, de will depend on their individual process. So in the next slide, we're going to be talking about all of their supporting documents that you require. Um, so work on collecting those documents. And we also recommend making a photocopy or digital scan of everything for your records. Um, we'll talk in the next slide, but it's always better to have more copies and more documents when you attend your appointment than less because a lot of the process and the documents that they review is up to consular jurisdiction. So the goal is to be as prepared as possible to have as many documents as uh, you think they might need. So then you're going to take them to the consulate for your application appointment. So an in-person appointment is required to obtain your visa. So there are no Zoom appointments, no mail-ins generally. So please be aware that you will have to physically go to the office to attend your appointment. Then after everything is submitted, after you go to the consulate, uh, you will either then pick up or receive your visa by mail. 
So your visa will be a full page sticker placed inside your passport. You can see an image of a sample on the left side of the page. This also means that one of your required supporting documents is your actual physical passport, which means that you will not have access to your passport while your visa is being processed by the Greek consulate. We know a number of you have summer travel plans that will take you outside your home country or outside the US. So we recommend um, carefully assessing your summer plans and planning your visa application appointment around your time abroad. We wanna make sure that you can both apply for your visa in a timely manner and complete any of your exciting summer travel plans. So some commonly needed additional supporting documents that you may need to bring with you um, that's required for your appointment. So the medical form, uh, which can be found on the consulate website, you'll need to bring that with you. It's also linked uh, in the Northeastern Greece visa guide. Um, you'll need to have that filled out uh, by your medical doctor and signed. And then of course, make a copy and bring the original with you to the appointment. You also may need uh, your flight tickets, travel documents. Again, this can vary um, amongst consulates of who you will be uh, going to for your appointments. But some consulates uh, require uh, flight tickets. Other consulates, um, they may not need your flight tickets, but it's always good to know uh, the dates that you will be um, arriving as well as the dates that you will be uh, departing. Other documents that you may need uh, from Northeastern, uh, which you can find on your app status check, including your program enrollment letter uh, and your foreign travel letter. And then additional documents from ACT, those can be requested from our Director of Admissions, Rula, as necessary. You'll also want to bring with you a uh, proof of funds for the durations of your stay in Greece. Um, for those, uh, consulates usually like to see supporting documents of bank and credit card statements for the past three months, um, as well as W-2 forms for the last two years. Um, if uh, students are um, providing for their own fee, uh, health parents are, are covering expenses, then the consulates will want to see bank and credit card statements for the past three months for the parents or and W-2 forms for the last two years uh, from the parents as well, along with a notarized signed affidavit from the parents um, stating that they uh, will cover uh, all financial support uh, during the student's time abroad in Greece. You'll also need to bring with you a payment fee for returning your passport to you after the visa has been placed. Uh, sometimes these uh, payment fees can vary. Some consulates accept cash, uh, some credit card, uh, some check. So uh, you may want to bring all three forms of payment just in case. Um, or you can also verify uh, with the consulates when you set up your appointment and ask for a list of requirements. Um, and then you'll also want to bring with you the self-address address envelope uh, so then your passport can return to you. So here are some of the questions that we are frequently asked about the process. So uh, how long does the visa process take? Angel, how long typically do students wait for their visa after they've attended their appointment? I mean, the process can really vary depending on the time of year, but average processing can take anywhere from two weeks, uh, two to three weeks, depending on um, how quickly or the, the time of year. Um, that's what we found amongst the consulates. So we definitely recommend applying early if you can. Mm -hmm. And when should we start applying? So I think there's kind of two stages to the process. There's the getting ready for the appointment, and then mm -hmm. there's the scheduling and the actual appointment. And you can pursue both simultaneously. I know we've heard mm -hmm. from several students and families that certain consular authorities are um, slow to respond to outreach, either by phone or email, about uh, appointment scheduling. Uh, so I think continuing outreach about your appointment uh, to them is recommended at this point. But in terms of supporting documents, start gathering things now. Start reviewing mm -hmm. the list and going through to say, what can I get now? What might I have to wait a month or two to get? Mm -hmm. Can I, oh, sorry, Angel. All right. I mean, you can start applying as early as six months. However, sometimes the consulate locations will only release appointments a few months in advance. 
So even if you're looking for an appointment now, um, some consult locations may not open appointments until um, June or July. And so that's when contacting the consulates and verifying when those appointments will be open um, is always a good idea. And if you will have a challenge uh, contacting them or hearing back from them, we're always happy to help as well with outreach. Can I do my appointment over Zoom? So any of the COVID era uh, allowances have been ended. So an in-person appointment is required for Greek consular authorities in the U.S., so please plan appropriately during the summer that you might have to travel to your local consulate. Some of the jurisdictions are quite large, so that might require a flight. Any other accommodations that the consul is able to make would be on a generally a one-off basis if they permit you to do something different, but we can't say for sure what they will allow, for example, for a mail-in application process that is totally up to their um, discretion. How do I know which consulate to apply to? Uh, we mentioned earlier in our presentation um, the nine Greek consulates in the U.S. So it depends upon where you live and which consulate has jurisdiction over your permanent address. You can only apply at a consular authority where you uh, can establish that you have a presence. So that's either through your permanent address, what's the address in your driver's license. Um, unfortunately, you can't pick where you apply. You can't decide, you know, I'm going to be in a different part of the country, I will apply through their local consular authority. You have to go with a consular authority that has jurisdiction over your permanent address. So this last question is one that we're hearing quite a bit right now. What if I cannot schedule an appointment or if there are no appointments available? As Angel mentioned, many of the consular authorities release their appointments in batches. So right now for many consulates, their priority is Travelers who will be visiting Greece over the summer. So they're processing basically visit visas for earlier in the summer. And many of them will kick off a lot of their processing for fall term student visas later in the summer. So we've heard from students both this cycle and in prior cycles. Some consulates will say, you know, call us back in a month or we'll get back to you. Uh, that is not unusual. We found that some consular authorities um, schedule appointments based on students' departure date. So, for example, for the 2023 group that went to ACT, a lot of students had appointments in mid and late August. And I can say that out of the 300 plus students that went to Greece last year, everybody was able to receive their visa in time for travel, even those who had appointments in mid and late uh, August. So, if you're, for example, outreaching a consulate, if you are emailing them or calling them, make sure in any outreach that you have to them, you say, I'm a Northeastern student. I will be studying at ACT for the fall semester. Here are my travel dates because they typically schedule appointments based on your travel date. So just make clear who you are, where you're studying, and when you're traveling. You might look at the date that they grant you and say, gosh, can I get that in time? The consulate will not set you up for failure. If they grant you an application date, it's because they know that they can process your visa application in time for your planned departure. We didn't have any students last year who were granted a late August appointment who then had to change their travel plans. So I know that this is a nerve wracking process. I know that this is challenging to wait, but the consulates are able to accommodate appointments, even though it's maybe not as early as you would want during the summer. Anything else from your end, Angel, on appointment scheduling? Mm -hmm. It covers it. So it's just some final contact information. Um, if you have any questions for us at ACT, uh, we have our information for our Director of Missions, Rula Lev Leslie. Uh, she processes all the applications as well as issues uh, the acceptance letters in Greek for the consulates. So if you need your letter, um, she will be the one processing the form and she can help with any questions about that. Um, and then if you have uh, general visa questions, feel free to reach out to me as well with Virginia. Um, and then also we have our administrative assistant at ACT, um, Eva, who can assist as well. Okay, so that concludes our presentation. I'm going to stop sharing so we can uh, 
take your questions. Yes. Yeah, so thank you everyone for your questions. We know that we have a lot coming in and we're trying to answer. Um, just a few questions that are coming up quite frequently. Firstly is information on group flights. So we mentioned group flights. We will send out information later this month on how each student can register for a group flight. In that documentation, we ask that students provide the closest airport to their home of record. And that helps us establish which cities flights will leave from. Um, so that's a big thing. So keep an eye out on your email for the group flight information. For important dates for our program, the NUN Greece website is going to have all of the program dates that we mentioned listed there. So everything that you need to know date-wise is in there and that can help provide some context to your plans and how you book um, information or travel or these appointments. Uh, we have, we're working on getting you all the NUN program enrollment letter, which comes from Northeastern, which will be in your application status check. This is also an important reminder that documents will be uploaded there as well as items for you to complete for your checklist. And then the other big question that is coming up right now is this ACT letter of enrollment. And a lot of people seem to be worried. So just to give some background, ACT has been on break. They just finished up their spring semester and they had a long break period recently. Um, this means that they're receiving the Google form that you filled out for your ACT letter. Also, you all are expecting them to send it directly to you to pro be provided by you for your appointments. ACT will send these letters directly to the consular authority that you indicate on the Google form. Um, so that document is sent to the consular that you indicate written in Greek for the staff there to understand that you are enrolled at ACT um, and that they have that documentation. So if you haven't received that, that's not to worry. Um, mm -hmm. It takes about two weeks. So from this date, two weeks out, all of these consular authorities should be receiving those letters. Mm -hmm. And enroll, it does usually CC the students as well when she sends them to the consulates. Um, and just as Megan mentioned, said the spring break term just ended and there was actually a, a big holiday, the Ortho Orthodox Easter holiday last week. So all ACT campuses were closed for that holiday, but they're returning this week. So everything should be starting the process. Yeah, thank you, Angel. Um, so Virginia, we've had a few questions about uh, passports and whether they will be given back in person or whether they will be mailed back. What is your experience with that? Mm -hmm. It really depends upon the consular authority. So, um, and also how close you live to that consulate. So uh, some will permit in-person pickups when your visa is approved. That's especially helpful if you live close to the consulate, but we know you might have to travel across several states for it. So when you're booking your appointment, whether that's by phone or by email, um, you can also ask, how will my passport be returned? So you can prepare to say to, at your appointment so you can have a prepaid mailing envelope, or you can know if you might have to go in person to collect it. We have a few people asking about uh, background checks, both U.S. and international students. Can you just mm -hmm. review that information again? Yep. So on the visa guide, there's a link to uh, the FBI's website about how to go forward with the identity check process. Um, there's a few different options you can take depending upon where you're located in the U.S. and works at, what works out for you best in terms of timing. So I think the FBI's um, identity check website is your best resource. Um, if you are located outside of the U.S., um, the type of background check you would need will likely be specified by your local Greek consular authority. Um, many countries have different types of checks. Sometimes it's a national background check, sometimes it's a local police check. So I'd refer to your local consulate if you're outside the U.S. and are wondering how to proceed. 
Mm -hmm. um, Megan, I'm also seeing quite a few questions from international students. They're wondering about steps in the process and how to proceed with both their Greek visa and their F1. So your priority should be your visa for the fall, should be your Greek student visa. So if you have time over the summer to then apply for your F1 in your home country or with your local uh, U.S. consular jurisdiction, you can go forward with that. But you're also able to apply for your F1 through the U.S. Embassy in Athens during the fall. So first step should be the visa you need for the fall. And then second to that should be the visa that you need for January 2025. Um, Specific information on getting your I-20 and your F-1 application process will be sent out by Northeastern's Office of Global Services to any uh, F-1 required students. If you have questions about your specific procedures, you can also um, reach out to OGS um, or NUN at northeastern.edu and we can help connect you. Yeah, that's great. and and. Again, those those students who are international and need that information, we support you in the fall. Um, and and it, again, it was a pretty easy process last year in Greece for the few students that needed to process I-20s and get their F-1. Um, unfortunately, there isn't um, a place in Thessaloniki that you can do it that stays open, so it would require travel to Athens potentially. Um, but it's a relatively easy process. And also our international office at Northeastern, make sure to stay in contact with those students fairly early on. Um, I was also getting questions on the documents that we mentioned for that are required from Northeastern when you go to your visa appointment. We are working on getting those uploaded into your app status check. Um, we do not have them currently, but we're working in these next couple of weeks to make sure all of the information in the program enrollment letter and also what is described as the foreign travel letter, which is the emergency insurance. Um, and it states in there, we're making sure all of that information is correct before we upload them. So please just keep checking back into the app status check and it will be in documents that you'll see on the right hand side of your screen when you log into your portal. So just keep looking at those. Um, we'll also be sending a few emails out, um, especially by the end of this month and into next month for uh, reminders that we have. Okay. And we also uh are getting some, some questions about the email, like which email we're communicating with. From our perspective, you're Northeastern students now, so we'll be communicating all of those emails to your Northeastern email. So if you're not, you are like, oh, I haven't gotten anything yet. I don't see anything. I don't see responses. Everything is going through your Northeastern email address, not to your personal account. If you haven't checked that in a while, now would be a good time to do so students and parents, I suggest you go over information together, especially for the visa process. Students are going to need a lot of family support in this process, making sure all of these documents are together, um, making sure they are booking the right appointments, printing off the, the right things. Of course, the financial aspect is important for parents to be aware of. So if you haven't yet taken the time to look over those emails, I suggest doing so together, as well as reviewing the application status check together. Uh, we are seeing a number of questions about the schedule and um, Parents' Day in November. So uh, either Daniel or Megan, can you speak about that briefly? Sure. Um, so parents, day more like parents weekend right around thanksgiving so as you know thanksgiving is not celebrated in greece students still have classes um, but what act does which is wonderful is that they have that weekend as an opportunity for parents and families to come visit in greece um, and they will the hotels will um, send out rsvps that we'll talk about later on in the summer and they'll cook a big Thanksgiving dinner for everybody. Like they do the whole thing, like chickens and turkeys and mashed potatoes and gravy and all of that. And then on the following Friday, they 
um, will bus parents, families, students up to campus to take a tour so you can see where your student has been studying. Um, that will happen the, the Friday, Saturday, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday of the Thanksgiving week. So if you choose to come, that's a good time to come and visit. Um, probably one of the better times to come and visit. It's a good time right before they end the semester. It's a good almost 12 weeks in or so, just under 12 weeks. Uh, we'll send out more information and we'll talk about that during the pre-departure orientation in July, as well as the webinar, the mandatory webinar in August. And again, once students get on site, we'll continue to send out um, information through not only student newsletters, but family newsletters that have um, a clearer schedule of the fall. Okay. And yes, this um, session is being recorded. It will be sent out to students and parents um, in the coming days. It'll also be on the uh, Northeastern First Year International Programs YouTube playlist. So you can reference this later. Um, I know we went kind of quickly through some of the previous slides, so you can certainly review that um, at your leisure. Um, Megan, can you speak briefly about PDO in July? Yes, absolutely. So we have an optional pre-departure orientation, what we call PDO, that will happen on either um, July 11th or July 13th of this year. So just in a few short months, it's an opportunity for students and families to travel into Boston for a full day of what the NUN program is. You'll have the opportunity to meet students that are also going to NUN Greece You'll have, there will be specific student sessions as well as specific parent sessions, how to prepare for a site, what we still need from you, a few document reminders, um, and just really an opportunity to connect. We get a lot of questions from students and families about how do I know who else will come? How do I connect with them? As we don't share out student information as higher ed professionals, it's a great time to get to know other folks, set up communication, figure out, oh my gosh, you're flying out of Boston, me too. Let's meet up at the airport. Let's get a chat going. Um, and the pre-departure orientation is the time to answer any and all last minute questions. Again, our website is a really fabulous resource for you all to refer to. Um, and pre-departure orientation is a reinforcement of the program and how we are supporting students as they travel abroad. Um, on that note, if you haven't yet filled out your program enrollment form, um, which is located in your app status check, that's an area that will collect a lot of information, including if you choose to request roommates. We had a question if you could change that. Um, at a later date. So once you fill that form out, you get an email and the email has a link to be able to change. You can't change it directly in your application status check um, or otherwise you can email nun at northeastern.edu. And if you have specific requests, our team on the other side can work on the back end to make any adjustments if we need to. Um, Again, NUN at northeastern.edu is another great resource for you to have. It is our portal for requests or questions, or if you're coming across a lot of obstacles and just want some help figuring out um, a few things or how to navigate the process, we can give you some um, advice or just walk you through or set up a time to chat. No problem at all. We're all available for support. And... Another question we are getting in is about academics. So your academic advisor of your college will be um, communicating with you most likely starting in June. And then that is when you will start meeting them, start choosing your courses, trying to set up which academic classes you would like to take for the fall. Uh, we received some questions about the affidavit if parents are providing financial support as part of the visa, um, there is no set form or set requirement from the consulates. Um, 
parents, guardians, financial sponsors can just type up a letter stating I relationship with a student uh, consent to provide financial support during their studies at ACT during the fall of 2024 um, and then sign and have it notarized. And you can usually get that notarized at a bank. Uh, banks will have notaries or sometimes post office will have a notary as well. Okay, let's see what else. Okay. Uh, Megan, can you speak briefly about um, insurance and the documentation that Northeastern provides? Yes. So Greece is a unique site. As, um, as I mentioned before, there will be a foreign travel letter in your application status check later on. That is a document that states Northeastern has a policy that will help in emergency insurance. That is the document that you will provide um, when it asks for travel insurance. That's the document that you should bring. The difference in that, which we'll go over many times, is that is emergency insurance. That is not your, that is not your day-to-day -day general GP check-in health insurance. So we ask that all students going to Greece maintain their own personal health insurance coverage. However, we also provide this foreign travel letter, which is the emergency insurance that you will bring to your visa appointment that will state the coverage directly in that letter. Okay. We are also asked about appointment scheduling. What is the latest I should schedule my visa appointment at the consulate? So if you're able to book your appointment through a self-service online booking platform, um, some consulates offer this, not all of them. I would say aim for at least two to three weeks of processing time um, before your departure date. If you are communicating with a consulate by email or phone, to book appointments, some of them prefer this method. Make sure you're sharing with them your departure date and they will assign you an appointment based around when they know they can get the visa processed. So they won't set you up for failure. They will book your application appointment uh, based on when they know they can get it back to you. Well, we're running up on time. Um, we tried to answer a lot of questions. We know a few people still had them. If you're still having questions again, please email us at nu, nun at northeastern.edu. Um, we'll do our best to make sure we follow up with you through that platform. Also, there may be some things in this recording that you might have missed. I suggest when you get the email to please review the information, go back over it. Um, the presentation will be shown in that recording. Um, and again, we appreciate everyone who has come today. Um, we hope that you ha have a smooth process at any point. Please reach out again here to support. And thank you for joining us today.